Hey, Shabbat Shalom, everybody. We are looking for more videos of viewers like you playing your shofar to put the opening and closing of our lessons. If you would like to submit a video, talk to your parents. There will be a link to a drive folder in the description below that you can upload to, or you can email them to us, trainedupintorah at gmail.com, or contact us on Facebook. All right, let's get going with this week's lesson. Shalom. Shabbat shalom, friends. I'm Miss Jordan. I'm going to be your host today. And today I also have my daughter Delena here to help me. Hey, guys. And so last week we started learning about leprosy and how to identify it. And we're going to continue learning about leprosy today. So let's go ahead and jump in and, and go learn about that. Delena, what do we have coming up first? We first have our Shema and our Shofar blowing, and then we'll have prayer, song, scripture, and our nature lesson. All right. Sounds great. Y'all go and enjoy that and meet me right back here. Shema. Israel, Yahweh Eloheinu, Yahweh Echad, Baruch Shem Kevod, Malhuto, Leolam Thank you, Father, for this wonderful day that you have made. We thank you so much for bringing us through another week to your Shabbat and for your many blessings, for Train Up in Torah, for all the families and contributors and all the people who are taking part in this, all the children who are watching. We pray you bless everyone in a very special way with your presence as we learn to walk in your ways and learn to be more like Yeshua every day. We love you so much, Father, and we thank you and pray all this in Yeshua's wonderful name. Amen. Shabbat Shalom. I have a song I'd like to share with you. The name of this song is Leprosy. <laughs>
Hey guys, this is CJ, and today we're going to look at Leviticus 14. And Yahweh spoke to Moshe, saying, This shall be the Torah of the leper for the day of his cleansing. He shall be brought to the priest, and the priest shall go out of the camp, and the priest shall look and see if the leprosy is healed in the leper. And the priest shall command, and he shall take for him who has to be cleansed to the live and clean birds, and cedar wood, and scarlet, and hyssop. And the priest shall command, and he shall kill one of the birds in an earthen vessel over running water. Let him take the live bird, and the cedar wood, and the scarlet, and the hyssop, and dip them and the live bird in the blood of the bird that was killed over the running water. And he shall sprinkle it seven times on him, who is to be cleansed from the leprosy and shall pronounce him clean, and shall let the live bird loose in an open field. And he who is to be cleansed shall wash his garments, and shall shave off all his hair, and shall wash himself in water, and shall be clean. Then, after he comes into the camp, he shall stay outside his tent seven days. And on the seventh day it shall be that he shaves all the hair off of his head and his beard and his eyebrows, even all the hair he shaves off. And he shall wash his garments and wash his body in water and shall be clean. And on the eighth day he takes two male lambs, perfect ones, and one ewe lamb, a year old, a perfect one, and three-tenths of an ephah of fine flour mixed with oil as a grain offering and one log of oil. And the priest who is cleansing shall present the man who is to be cleansed with these offerings before Yahweh at the door of the tent of meeting. And the priest shall take one male lamb and bring it as a guilt offering and the log of oil and wave them as a wave offering before Yahweh. And he shall slaughter the lamb in the place where he slaughters the sin offering and the burnt offering in the set-apart place. For the guilt offering, like the sin offering, belongs to the priest. It is most set apart. And the priest shall take some of the blood of the guilt offering, and the priest shall put it on the tip of his right ear of him who is to be cleansed, and on the thumb of his right hand, and on the big toe of his right foot. And the priest shall take some of the log of oil and pour it into the palm of his own left hand. And the priest shall dip his right finger in the oil that is in his left hand and sprinkle some of the oil with his finger seven times before Yahweh. And of the rest of the oil in his hand, the priest puts some on the tip of the right ear of him who is to be cleansed on the thumb of his right hand and on the big toe of his right foot, on the blood of the guilt offering. And the rest of the oil that is in the priest's hand he puts on the head of him who is to be cleansed, and the priest shall make atonement for him before Yahweh. And the priest shall make the sin offering and make atonement for him who is to be cleansed from his uncleanness. Then afterwards he slaughters the burnt offering, and the priest shall offer the burnt offering and the grain offering on the altar, and the priest shall make atonement for him, and he shall be clean. But if he is poor and is unable to afford it, then he shall take one male lamb as a guilt offering to be waved to make atonement for him, and one-tenth of an ephah of fine flour mixed with oil as a grain offering and a log of oil, and two turtle doves or two young pigeons, such as he is able to afford, and one shall be a sin offering and the other a burnt offering, and he shall bring them to the priest on the eighth day for his cleansing to the door of the tent of meeting before Yahweh. And the priest shall take the lamb of the guilt offering, and the log of oil, and the priest shall wave them as a wave offering before Yahweh. And he shall slaughter the lamb of the guilt offering, and the priest shall take some of the blood of the guilt offering, and put it on the tip of the right ear of him who is to be cleansed, and on the thumb of his right hand, and on the big toe of his right foot. Then the priest pours some of the oil into the palm of his own left hand, and the priest shall sprinkle 
with his right finger some of the oil that is in his left hand seven times before Yahweh. And the priest shall put some of the oil that is in his right hand on the tip of his right ear of him who is to be cleansed, and on the thumb of the right hand, and on the big toe of his right foot, on the place of the blood of the guilt offering. And the rest of the oil that is in the priest's hand he puts on the head of him who is to be cleansed, to make atonement for him before Yahweh. And he shall prepare one of the turtle doves, or young pigeons, as he is able to afford that which is he is able to afford the one as a sin offering and the other as a burnt offering with the grain offering and the priest shall make atonement for him who is to be cleansed before Yahweh this is the Torah for the one who had an infection of leprosy who was unable to afford for his cleansing and Yahweh spoke to Moshe and to Aaron, saying, When you come into the land of Canaan, which I am giving you as a possession, and I put a plague of leprosy in a house in the land of your possession, then the one who owns the house comes and inform the priest, saying, It seems to me that there is some plague in the house. And the priest shall command, and they shall empty the house before the priest goes into look at the plague so that all that is in the house is not made unclean and after that the priest goes in to look at the house and he shall look at the plague and see if the plague is on the walls of the house with sunken places greenish or reddish which appear to be deep in the wall then the priest shall go out of the house to the door of the house and shut up the house for seven days and the priest shall come again on the seventh day and look and see if the plague has spread on the walls of the house. And the priest shall command, and they shall remove the stones with the plague in them, and they shall throw them outside the city into an unclean place, while he lets the house be scraped inside all around, and all the dust that they scrape off they shall pour out in an unclean place outside the city. And they shall take other stone and put them in the place of the stones and take other mortar and plaster the house. If the plague comes back and breaks out in the house after he has removed the stones, after he has scraped the house and after it is plastered, then the priest shall come and look and see. If the plague has spread in the house, it is an act of leprosy in the house. It is unclean. And he shall break down the house, its stones, its timber, and all the plaster of the house, and he shall bring them outside the city to an unclean place. And he who goes into the house all the days while it is shut up becomes unclean until evening. And he who lies down in the house has to wash his garments, and he who eats in the house has to wash his garments. However, if the priest indeed comes in and looks at it and sees that the plague has not spread in the house after the house was plastered, then the priest shall pronounce the house clean, because the plague is healed. And to cleanse the house, he shall take two birds and cedar wood and scarlet and hyssop. And he shall kill one of the birds in an earthen vessel over running water. And he shall take the cedar wood and the hyssop and the scarlet and the live bird and dip them in the blood of the slain bird and in the running water and shall sprinkle the house seven times. He shall thus cleanse the house with the blood of the bird and the running water and the live bird, with the cedar wood and with the hyssop and the scarlet. And he shall let the bird loose outside the city in the open field, and shall make atonement for the house, and it shall be clean. This is the Torah for any infection of leprosy and eruption, and for leprosy of a garment and of a house and for a swelling, and for a scab, and for a bright spot, to teach when it's unclean and when it is clean. This is the Torah of Leprosy. Shabbat Shalom! This is Honor with your nature lesson today. In scripture today, Yahweh said that if your house had mildew in it, let the priest look at the house and do not stay in the house until it is clean. What is mildew? How does it get where it gets? Why do you think it wasn't safe to be in the house? 
Mildew is a conspicuous mass of white thread-like hyphae and fruiting structures produced by various fungi. Mildew grows in moist and humid environments. Mildew is bad for your health. It can cause sneezing, runny or stuffy noses, coughing, sore throat, wheezing, and shortness of breath. Some people are also allergic to mildew. Here are a few ways to kill mildew. You can scrub it with a bleach solution or a household cleanser designed to kill mildew. Spray the area with vinegar and let soak. Or expose the area with sunshine and fresh air. That is all for this week. Shabbat Shalom. All right, guys. So what did y'all think about that? Did y'all catch anything that uh, that was interesting to y'all? I know I know, I did. And I made a few notes here that um, I'll talk about here in a second. But... Uh, Delena, what did you catch in the, in the, in the Torah reading or what, what, what did you learn or think about, you know, what did it make you think about? It made me think a lot about when Yeshua healed the 10 lepers in Luke 17. So in Luke 17, 12 through 19, he was approached by 10 lepers and he told them, go present yourself to the priest like it does in Leviticus 14, 2. And in that verse, it says that the lepers are to go to the priest to see if they are clean. So in Luke 17, we see that Yeshua is telling the lepers to do the same thing. Um, so we can see that they're following Torah there. Yeah. So he say he told them to go to a priest, mm -hmm. you know, so, so what do you think um, was going to happen when they went to the priest? Well, it says in the verses that as they were walking to the priest that they became clean. So if they went to the priest, he would be able to find them clean and then they would probably perform the same rituals as they do here in Leviticus 14. Yeah, I'd imagine so. I think that that's probably what Yeshua was having them go present themselves to the priest for was to go show him um, so that the priest could check their their leprous infection and, and see if they it was healed. And then if it was, I, he would perform everything that we've read here in, in Leviticus 14 um, so that they could be permitted back into the camp and back into their home and eventually the temple. So I think that that's a great, a great connection. Cool. Um, something that I noticed immediately uh, because we've we read this, we, we read a connection, you know, just a few chapters before in Leviticus 8. Um, so in Leviticus 8 is when... Uh, they're consecrating Aaron and the priesthood. And, and so Aaron and his sons uh, to be in the priesthood, to make them priests. And in that ceremony, they, they put blood on their right ear, their right thumb, and their right big toe. The, mm -hmm. Not Aaron, but his sons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, for Aaron, it's slightly different, not, not a whole lot different. And maybe your translation, it shows it being the exact same. Mine's a little bit different. I think mine says that for Aaron, it was the right hand and not just the thumb. Oh. But for his sons, it does specifically say that they put blood on their right ear, their right thumb, and their right big toe. And we see here in Leviticus 14, um, let me see if I can find it for y'all real quick. Here we go. Uh, Here we see um, the same thing happening in Leviticus 14, uh, verse 14. It says, And the priest shall take some of the blood of the guilt offering, and the priest shall put it on the tip of the right ear of him who is to be cleansed, and on the thumb of his right hand, and on the big toe of his right foot. Um, I noticed that, I mean, right off the bat, and I was like, that is so familiar. And I knew it had to do with the, the priesthood. Mm -hmm. And... You know, what do we think that that's connected to? I'm, I'm thinking it has something to do with being made, um, maybe set apart, kadosh. Yeah, a um, reconsecration. A reconsecration. Because he was thrown, not thrown out, but he was sent out of the camp. And so it's kind of a ritual to bring him back into Yahweh's camp. Yeah, and, and there's going to be have to be some sort of um, holiness uh, attached to being within the, the camp. And what were you saying? Um, and leprosy is equated with sin. Right. In the Bible. Um, which would, which would be unholiness. So maybe it is like a, a, a consecration. Well, obviously it's a form of consecration and, and making one holy again. Mm -hmm. Um, but I just thought that was really interesting that we see that with the, 
the priesthood being consecrated. And here we see it with the lepers. I, I just thought that was amazing. Um, something else I noticed was that there was two birds and one was killed and the other was let go. Um, what does that remind you of Delena? You remember? I mean, it kind of reminds me of Jonah, but I'm not, not Jonah, Noah, but I don't know if that's where you're going with that. Cause none of the birds died. Yeah, no, not, not Noah. Do y'all know what I'm referring to? Can you think of another story in the Bible where there's two animals that are the same and one is killed and another is released? The Azazel goats? Yeah. Yay, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we see this in the in in the Torah for how to observe Yom Kippur. You have the two goats. You have one that is killed for or sacrificed um for all the sins of Israel. And then you see the scapegoat, uh, the Azazel goat that is let loose in the wilderness. And um, I heard a teacher once speak about these two birds here in Leviticus, that they were probably something like a sparrow and not like a dove or a pigeon because those have homing instincts and they would want this bird to go off and never to return. Oh, okay. Um, Kind of like with the Azazel goat, they don't, you know, they right. don't expect that goat to return. But I, that's just a teaching that I heard um, that so something you might study out more for yourself. But I noticed the two animals uh, as well. Um, that's kind of cool, though, about the sparrow, because like if the dove or pigeon were to come back, it would be bringing the leprosy back into the camp. Symbolically. Point, symbolically. Symbolically. So with the yeah. sparrow, it's gone forever. Yeah. In a way, like yeah. symbolically. Symbolically, it's, it's supposed to just be, be sent off in a way. Cool. Yeah. Um, let's see. What else do my notes? Um, I noticed the hyssop. We see hyssop. Do you remember where else we see hyssop? Don't we see hyssop when they put the blood over the doorposts? Yeah. Yeah. So the first Passover, they use a hyssop branch to apply the the blood of the lamb on the doorposts. Is it part of the lilac? I don't think so. No. I'm not sure, but I don't think so. Okay. Um, so uh, the hyssop I noticed as well. And then um, something else was also the blood in the water. And um, we see that when Yeshua was crucified, when the soldiers came to check on him, they, they stabbed him in the ribs. And what poured out, Delena? water blood and water blood and water yeah blood and water poured out and um you yeah. know the water that is prescribed in this um in this ritual is uh, called living water running water living water and yeshua is called living water and so we kind of see a fulfillment of of the need for living water for uses for purification and sanctification. And um, Yeshua provides that right. for us being our ultimate source of living water. It's never going to dry up. He's always going to be there for us and, uh, and be there for us for, for that sanctification and, and cleansing. Um, so I thought that was interesting to see the, the water being used here and then right. the water that we see coming out of Yeshua. Well, not just the water, the blood and the water, right. um, yeah. the two together are very significant and important. We also see sprinkling of blood, um, a lot. And we see that with, um, we saw that with Aaron and his sons mm -hmm. being consecrated. And we saw that whenever they were consecrating the, like the, the altar and, and the utensils. The yeah. So lots of connections here. This is a, um, it's unique, but it's also very tied and connected with all the other yeah. um, Torah commands uh, around cleansing, sanctification, purification, um, sacrifices. Yeah. You know, we, we, we see that Yahweh's ways, they don't change. And it's the same for a lot of different um, needs and uses. Right. I guess that makes it kind of easy to remember this process, too, because they would do it for everything. And so yeah. it's like... They, they already know the process for right. the cleansing and purification. Yeah, with so many things being the same, it would be easy to remember. And also, do you think that whenever they saw that water and blood coming out of Yeshua, do you think that that might have had a bigger impact on them, being that they were around these 
processes these yeah, uh, rituals so much that they're that might have had a very big significance in their minds and right. and know what that means whereas we have to like learn and study how this works i feel like the hebrews at the time uh when yeshua was crucified this would have just like an immediate big impact on them and they would know like what that living water means and that blood right. of of um the son of yahweh um you know what what implications that has yeah because it seems like the two together kind of have a big symbolism of pure pureness and yeah holiness so, so to see that would be very interesting for yeah sure. impactful and, and important yeah um let's see What else did my notes have? Those were some really big ones. We see a little bit of similarity with the red heifer ceremony. Um, there's um, that one was taken outside, was done outside the camp, whereas the first part of our leprosy ceremonies here take. Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> I just started thinking about my son with the red heifer. <laughs> Yeah. Do y'all remember her song? <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember the song? And um, there was, she did the stop motion animation and there is the red heifer outside the camp and it went poof. <laughs> a lot of us at Trina Pintora had a big laugh about that song and her animation. <laughs> so I get it. <laughs> But yes, the, that ceremony was done outside the camp, and so was um, so was the first part of the uh, the leper, the leper <laughs> ceremony. You're making this difficult. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, on that note, I think we might should move y'all on to uh, the next portion of of uh, of the lesson. So, Delena, tell them what videos they uh they have to look forward to right now hebrew and your moral story all right y'all go listen to those and we'll meet you right back here for our last uh our last little meetup together Shalom, Mishpacha. This is your Havara Yohana, or Miss Joanna. I'm here with Bryn to present this week's Hebrew language lesson. Today we're going to learn how to say the names of the days of the week in Hebrew, this after our Bible story from the book of Genesis about the creation week. Genesis is the first book in the Bible. The Hebrew name of this book of Torah, or Torah, is Bereshit, which means beginning. The very first words in the book of Bereshit are, In the beginning Yahweh created the heavens and the earth. The scriptures tell us that Yahweh did all of his work of creating in six days, and on the seventh day, he rested from all of his work. Yahweh called the seventh day Shabbat, which means rest. The seventh day, or Shabbat, also referred to as Sabbath, is the only day in Hebrew that has an actual name. The rest of the days of the week are simply called by the number of that day in the week. So we have first day, second day, third day, fourth day, fifth day, sixth day, and then Shabbat for the seventh day. 
the commanded day of rest. This is different than in English, where we have names for each of the days of the week: Sunday and Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday, Thursday and Friday, and then Saturday. Another difference between Hebrew and English is that Hebrew is written and read from right to left, while English is written and read from left to right. Now on to learning the Yemai Hashabua, or the days of the week in Hebrew. In Hebrew, the word used for day when speaking about the days of the week is Yom, Y O M, Yom. When saying each of the names of the days of the week in Hebrew, first we say Yom, and then we add the number of that specific day. So, beginning with day one or first day, because that's the best place to start, we would say Yom Rishon. Yom Rishon. Now you repeat after me. Yom Rishon. Yom Rishon. Is the day that we call Sunday in English. Day two or second day in Hebrew is Yom Shani. Yom Shani. Now you try. Yom Shani. Yom Shani is the day that we call Monday in English. Day three or third day is Yom Slishi in Hebrew. Yom Slishi. Okay, it's your turn. You say Yom Slishi. Yom Slishi is the day that is called Tuesday in English. Day four or fourth day is Yom Ravii. Yom Ravii. Now you try. Yom Ravii. Yom Ravii is the day that is called Wednesday in English. Day five or fifth day, which is Thursday in English, is Yom Hamishi in Hebrew. That one's a bit longer and perhaps a little bit more difficult to say than the names of the other days of the week that we've learned so far. And the beginning sound is different than anything that we have in English. In English, the letters C H together are pronounced ch, ch, like when we say chicken. But the Hebrew letter chet, which is the eighth letter in the Aleph Bet or the Hebrew alphabet, which is sometimes written C H in the English alphabet, sounds like you're clearing your throat. Let's try the C H sound or the chet sound together. Now repeat after me, Yom Hamishi. Now you try it, Yom Hamishi. It's also acceptable to say Yom Hamishi, Yom Hamishi, if the ch chet sound is a little too difficult to begin with. But keep trying; you'll get the hang of it eventually. Day six or sixth day, which is Friday in English, is pretty simple to say in the Hebrew. It's pronounced Yom Shishi, Yom Shishi. Now you try, Yom Shishi. And finally, we come to the last day of the week, the seventh day, the weekly Moed or appointed time. The day Abba commanded us to remember, observe, set apart, and rest from all of our work, just as He rested after His six days of creating the heavens and the earth and all that are contained therein. This is Shabbat. Sometimes this day is also called Yom Shabbat, or Day of Rest, or Rest Day. On Shabbat, it's customary to say Shabbat Shalom to our mishpacha, that is our family, and our chavurim, those are our friends. When we say Shabbat Shalom, we're saying Sabbath peace, but actually, we're saying so much more. 
When we say Shabbat Shalom, it's like telling our mishpacha and our chavarim to have a restful, joyous, peaceful, and blessed day in the presence of Abba Yah. Mazel Tov, or congratulations. You've just learned many new Hebrew words. The more you say them, the quicker you'll remember them, and the better you'll become at using them. So practice saying these Hebrew words throughout the week. Until next time, Shalom Bishem Yeshua HaMashiach, or peace to you in the name of Yeshua Messiah. Hey guys, it's CJ. I was just uh, thinking about Leviticus 14, and you know, one of the biggest things that stuck out to me was that if somebody thought they had leprosy, or thought their house had leprosy, they went to the priest as soon as they saw a spot. They didn't wait for it to get big. And I think I equated that to, if we have something in our lives that isn't quite right, we need to go to somebody and tell them and confess. And even once when we confess, it takes some time to clean ourselves from that. What did you guys think about Leviticus 14? What did you learn? All right, guys, we've had so much fun with y'all today. And I really hope that we gave y'all some things to, to think about and to maybe study out further with your family. Um, it's been a pleasure to study Leviticus 14 with y'all, but y'all don't leave yet. You also have a few more um, things, activities, you know, to do with uh, with us today. So, Lena, what are those activities that they have left? Your song, memory verse, snack, craft, and prayer. Oh, those are some of my favorite sections. So I hope y'all enjoy this today. I enjoyed my time with y'all today. And until next time, Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Bye, guys.
Shabbat Shalom, everyone. This week, our memory verse is Jeremiah 17, 14. Jeremiah 17, 14 says, Heal me, O Yahuwah, so that I am healed. Save me so that I am saved, for you are my praise. Leviticus 14 states the steps and procedures for anyone who is healed from leprosy. Leprosy was a much more common thing for a person to come into contact with in Scripture. Therefore, it was very important to take the proper steps when a person was cleansed. Today, we can still be thankful and praise Yahuwah for all the things that He heals us from. His mercy and kindness are everlasting. Jeremiah 17, 14 Heal me, O Yahuwah, so that I am healed. Save me, so that I am saved. For you are my praise. Thank you for joining us. I pray you all have a wonderful week. Shabbat Shalom. Hey guys, Shalom. I hope you've been having a great time this week at Sabbath School. Are you guys ready for a fun craft? We're going to watch this craft by the Tim family, and then I'll be back here in just a few minutes for some more fun. Shabbat Shalom, trained up in Torah friends. This is Miss Michaela, and I will be doing your craft this week. Today we'll be cleansing our paper leopard. In Leviticus 14, 8 through 9, our leper had to wash his clothes, shave off all of his hair, then he came into the camp, but he had to stay outside for, of his tent for seven days. On the seventh day, he shaved off all the hair of his head, including his beard and eyebrows. So if you want to draw your own leper, you may want to leave off his eyebrows. For today's craft, you will need water, indelible markers, paper or cardstock, scissors, a Ziploc or plastic bag, crayons, a glass container, and something to dry up any spilled water. You can download the free PDF of our paper leper from the link on the To It Facebook page, or you can draw your own. Fold the paper in half and place it in a Ziploc or bag facing the clear side. Then you will need to trace your leper on the plastic bag. If you want to, you can trace the clean part and the word unclean onto the bag as well. Now you can take it out of the bag and color it whatever way you like. When you are done, put it in the bag lined up with the marker you had traced. Pour water into your glass container. If you crease your leper down the middle, he may be easier to dump. Now your leper is clean. I hope you enjoyed this craft. Shabbat Shalom! Awesome. That one looked like a lot of fun. I can't wait to do that one later this week. Are you guys ready for a snack? Mmm, I'm getting hungry. I hope you are too. This week we're going to make turtle dove nest. You can do this with or without the eggs if you can't find or don't want candies. The instructions and the ingredients are in a link in the description of the video, so you can find that there. If you're looking for um, ideas for the what could be used as the eggs, you can use whatever you're comfortable with that you think look like eggs, like M&Ms or Reese's Pieces if you're comfortable with that. Um, you can use 
jelly beans if you get some clean ones watch out for those ingredients um, and then here we have at our Walmart we have this brand called unreal and they don't have any dyes they're not GMO um, they're clean and they taste delicious so that's also another option if you're looking for a healthier candy um, to make these turtle dove nest um, with the eggs so I'd love to see how those turn out if you guys make them all right, you guys, so now we have an extra fun thing for you this week. This week, the Crumb family is showing you how to play Leprosy Tag. I'm going to explain this to you so that maybe you can play it too. So in typical tag, you have one person that is it, right? That one person says, I'm it, and they run and they chase somebody. You know, they're chasing everybody down and then they tag somebody and then their itness transfers to that person. So they are no longer it and the new person is it. So there's only one person that's it through the entire game and it keeps going and going until you all fall over exhausted. With leprosy tag, one person starts out being it and this person needs to be marked with a sticky note or a sign like in the video they used paper tape and yarn and just made a sign that said leper leper or unclean and that person is it they are the leper you want to run away from the leper so you have your other people so the leper goes around and they chase down and they tag somebody so now two of you are it and then you go and you put a sign or a sticky note on that person to also show that they are also the leper and then you continue going and those two lepers will tag two more people and you'll put more signs and things on them and it keeps going and going until you all have leprosy and then the game is over well you guys are you ready to see how it's played I really hope you enjoy this game and I hope you enjoy the rest of the Sabbath school lesson and I hope you have a great week I'll see you next time Shalom Is it go? Well, Shabbat Shalom, my little Torah friends, and my big Torah friends. This is Brother Stan here. It's really nice to have you joining us this Shabbat on Trained Up in Torah. And I was just going over this week's chapter in Why You Cry, or Leviticus chapter 14, where it talks about leprosy and how to be cleansed from leprosy and what the priests have to do to get us cleansed from the leprosy and, and also about how to, how to get a house straightened out when a house has leprosy and Leprosy was a very contagious disease. That means that one person could give it to another person very easily. And so people in Israel were, were very careful about avoiding people that, that had leprosy. And, and so it was very important to get cleansed from it. And Bugsy, 
Bugsy, what is all that white all over you? Well, Dad, I got leprosy. You've got leprosy? Well, I do, Dad. Bugsy, Bugsy, you don't have leprosy. Yes, I do. How, how did you get leprosy, Bugsy? Well, that kitty gave it to me, Dad. Bugsy, the kitty gave you leprosy? How did the kitty give you leprosy? Well, she was up on the counter, Dad. She's not supposed to be up there. But she said, hey, dog, you want to see what leprosy looks like? I said, okay. So I went over there. And she knocked a whole box of leprosy on me. She knocked a whole box of leprosy on you. She did, Dad. Bugsy, that's that's not leprosy, buddy. Um, did 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 this have anything to do with what the kitty knocked on you? She did, Dad. You better be careful. That's got leprosy in it. Bugsy, this is cornstarch. It says cornstarch right there. Well, I can't read, Dad. I can only go by what that kitty said. Well, that kitty pulled a trick on you, Bugsy. Oh, I'm really sad now. Oh. Well, you should be glad that you don't have leprosy because if if you uh if you had had leprosy, I don't I don't believe I'd be touching you right now. So, we got good news and bad news. The good news is is that. You don't have leprosy. Well, what's your bad news, Dad? Well, the bad news is, is is you can't get cleansed from that until it's not Sabbath. Well, y'all sure help people on the Sabbath. Yeah, you don't need healing. You need a bath. And so what we'll do is is you wear that for a little while. And then when it's not Sabbath, we'll get you we'll get you cleaned up, and and you need to uh, um, use this little noggin up here a little bit when that kitty tells you stuff. Matter of fact, that's that's a good idea for all of us. That is, sometimes there are people out there that 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 are going to trick us or try to get us to do things that we shouldn't do, and and the devil is really good at that, and so sometimes. People are actually doing the devil's work. And uh, hopefully, Bugsy, you learned something from this episode. And hopefully all of us can learn from Bugsy's uh, little incident here. Because, well, if we can learn from somebody else's mistakes and bad choices, we don't have to make those same choices. I mean, so let's, uh, let's go to the Father in prayer right now. Almighty Yahweh, our Father in heaven, praise be to your name. It is most set apart. Father, we love you and we praise you. And we thank you for uh, another get-together uh, on Trained Up in Torah. We uh, we thank you, Father, for uh, all the people that, that put this together for us. And we thank you for the lessons that we learned. And we just want to uh, ask, Father, as we go through this next week, that you'd help us to be the, 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 the children of Elohim that you would have us to be, that you would... Help us to walk after Yahshua's example and just and just follow in all your ways. And Father, uh, help us to be on guard. Put a hedge of protection around us so that if there are people that are that try to get us to go in a way that's that's not good, in a way that's not pleasing to you, that that we would be able to recognize that and and tell them, no, I won't go that way because I have a heart for Yahweh. And we just thank you, Father, for having a heart for us and for the way that you love us and take care of us. And so we, uh, we just praise you and we want to thank you again for another day of life and for another Sabbath on Trained Up in Torah. And we just love you. We praise you. We give you all honor and esteem. And we pray all these things in the name of Yahshua Hamasiach and for your great name's sake. Hallelujah. Well, my little Torah friends, and my big tour friends, uh, I'm going to have a little talk with Bugsy here about not being so gullible. 
and then uh yeah yeah we're gonna have a talk about not being so gullible and hopefully next time you see bugsy he's going to be all cleaned up but in the meantime hope you have a great great day and we'll see you next time on trained up in torah shabbat shalom Shabbat Shalom, friends. I'm Miss Jordan. I'm going to be your host today, and I brought my daughter Delena. Hi. <laughs> here with me to help me today. Last week, we started reading about leprosy, and we're going to continue learning about leprosy today. So let's go ahead and jump in and get started with our Shema and our Shofar blowing. Nope. Sorry. Can we? Okay. Um. Okay, so I don't know where to start it back up. <laughs> How do they do this? I don't know. You said today we're going to start with our Shema and our Shofar pulling. What you said? Okay. So, Delena, what do we have? Um, we're not, not going to be able to do this. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Blooper right there. No. <laughs> Are you ready? Possibly. <laughs> really, you're gonna make me stop at this because it's so long. <laughs> Shabbat Shalom, trained up in Torah friends. This is Miss Michaela, and I will be doing your craft this week. Today will we... <laughs> wow. <laughs> ...container and something to dry up any spill of water. You can download the free PDF. <laughs> <laughs> now your leper is clean. I... <laughs> I love you. <laughs>